up guys Jay's corner back here again and in today's video I'm going to be giving you guys my thoughts on what I think Team Wolf Season 7 should have been if the series were to continue or come back in some way shape or form. Now first off I want to get the idea that Team Wolf being a movie I kind of agree with that idea not really though I do think it should be a season because if you're going to cover sort of like all the time, detail, and effort that would go into a season and like maybe a two hour film. I just don't think it would work. So we're going to scratch movie off of the list right away. I do think it should be at least one more season, but we have to see how ratings do. We're taking that into account in today's video as well. So we're basically going to be breaking down um, a majority of things that I think season seven should be, but um, it's not really going to be uh, Team Wolf Season 7 is coming video. It's really just like speculation. So if you guys enjoy that type of content, uh, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Actually, before I get into the rest of the video, I gotta mention real quick, 78% of you guys aren't subscribed to the channel who watch these videos. So if you keep coming back and you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to the channel. It means a lot. And I would greatly appreciate your support. We are trying to hit 10,000 subscribers before the end of June. And we are trying to hit 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year. So if you guys can subscribe to the channel for me, that would be greatly appreciated. And also leave a like. only takes two seconds out of your day. And it would be awesome. Now, let's get into what I think Team Wolf Season 7 should be. Now, Jeff actually came out in an interview because somebody did ask him what season seven would have been if he had continued the series. And he mentioned that it should, it would have continued the Tamora Monroe arc, which I think that's the direction that season seven should go in as well. Seeing that it wouldn't make sense to just introduce, well, I mean, we're going to introduce a new creature, but it wouldn't make sense to change up the story for season seven because it would leave a lot of unanswered questions from Team Wolf season six part two. So, I do agree with Jeff on that, that it should continue from where they left off with the more Monroe. Um, introducing the new beta Alec, who was introducing the Wolves of War to the rest of the pack, getting him acquainted. And then I think the Tamora Monroe story should be the first half of season seven. I don't want to see it extended for a whole season. We've gotten like three or four seasons with Hunters already. Just finish up that story, kill off Tamora Monroe or do something, have her arrested, do whatever, and call it a day. Because that was probably one of the most boring story arcs in Teen Wolf. If you ask me personally, I know a lot of people in my comments in the past have mentioned that they love Season 6 Part 2. Personally, I don't. I think it's the worst season of Teen Wolf, and I think it has a lot, and I mean a lot, of problems. And I can make a whole video, or a whole separate video on that, explaining why it has so many issues. But... For the most part, it's just really rushed, in my opinion. Not a lot of things make too much sense. Um, and Tamora's, her backstory is okay, but it's not as interesting as antagonists in the past, like Sebastian Valet or even Garrett Douglas or even uh, the Nogatsune. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on that. But who do I think should return as a main cast in Season 7 for the main character's fault? Well, Tyler Posey, Scott McCall, obviously. I do think that Dylan O'Brien should return as the main cast, not having him be part of Season 6. Season 6 Part 1, I understand, because while he was filming Maze Runner Death Cure, he suffered a very, very almost fatal injury. So he really couldn't be a part of the filming of Season 6 Part 1, so that's why they had to come up with the story that they did with him being erased from existence and then Styles being in only, like, what, like three episodes? So... I understand why Dylan O'Brien wasn't part of season six, part one, but part two, there was really no excuse. Dylan wasn't really filming anything, I believe, during the filming of season six, part two. Um, Maze Runner, the Death Cure had already been filmed and finished. So, yeah, there was really no excuse for him not to be in season six, part two. And I think that him not being a main character was a huge detriment to that season because, man, if I'm going to be honest, most of the views come for come from people who want to watch Dylan O'Brien perform and give us all on Team Wolf like we've been loving um, him do for the better part of, what, 10 years now? So, yeah, um, I definitely think Styles should come back as a main character for sure. Now, I've seen in a whole bunch of 
Teen Wolf channel is both out fake content. I don't really like or respect those channels because I think tricking the fan base is a horrible thing to do. Having them believe something is coming that that's actually not is a horrible, 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 horrible thing to do to a fan base who really wants something and then you promise that thing is coming and it's not actually coming. That's a terrible thing to do. So I don't respect or like any of those channels. But um, yeah, me and Crowheasy, from what I've seen, are really the only Teen Wolf channels that are keeping Teen Wolf alive on YouTube at the moment. So yeah, but aside from that little tangent, I what I was trying to get to was that they have been promoting that Allison Argent should come back from the dead in some way, shape, or form. I don't think that should happen. If it does not make sense narrative-wise for the story, don't do it. Um, that's more of a fan service thing than anything. I mean, trust me, I would love to see Crystal Reed come back as Allison. Like, they used the Dread Doctor serum to somehow revive her, even though I think she'd be very, very, very decayed by now and probably, like, almost be a skeleton or something. But, um, yeah, if they can find some way to do it that makes sense within the story, maybe put her body near the Nematon, have some, like, Nematon magic, like, regenerate her body and have her come back to life, I guess. Or just find a way that makes sense narratively, then I'd be okay with Crystal Reed coming back as Allison Argent. But if it doesn't make sense and you're just including it for fan service, that's going to be, one, bad for the story. Two, it wouldn't really make sense because you're probably going to rush that and then just be like, we're bringing back Allison for the, sake of it, for the sake of bringing her back. So yeah, I wouldn't do that personally. So keep Crystal Reed out of the story. Now, Holland Roden, obviously bring her back. She has been in every season as a main character, so why not have her come back as Lydia? Um, Dylan Sprayberry, ha he's going to be an integral part of this video. So Dil Dylan Sprayberry, have him come back as William Dunbar for sure. Um, you could even have Arden Cho come back and make a little cameo as Kira if you wanted to. Have her you know, take a break from the Skinwalkers. Have her come back for maybe one episode to help out the pack and then have her go away. Um Daniel Sharman, I would want to see back as part of the main cast, so you could definitely get him back on board. Um, Shelly Hennig, of course, we need to see the relationship progress with her and Scott. Malia needs to come back. Tyler Hoechlin, since he was involved with a lot of the finale of season six, have him come back as a main character as well. Um, Cody Christian, I think Theo's story arc kind of ended in The Wolves of War, so... You can bring him back a little bit, but I wouldn't want to see him too much because most of his story progression has kind of wrapped up. Um, Peter, you can have him have a few scenes, a few, maybe a cameo or two, but he's not really important for this. Um, Melissa and Sheriff Stalinski, same boat as Peter, not really important. Uh, Chris, you can explore the relationship with Malia, I, with, not Malia, uh, Melissa, I guess, but... Not really important either. Tamora Monroe is definitely an integral part. I do think some new Hunter characters should be introduced, kind of like who's in command of certain things within that little Hunter group with Tamora. And then a creature should be introduced too. So here's how I would do Season 7. I would split it into two arcs, kind of like how they did with Season 6, Season 3, and Season 5. I would split Season 7 Part 1 wrapping up the hunter war between the uh, McCall pack and Tamora Monroe's army, wrap that shit up because nobody's going to want to see that for another season. Um, and then the second half of season seven should be kind of formatted and structured in the same way. I believe it should be a combination of season three, part two, how they did that. And then season five, part two as well, because those are personally the best season to me, and Season 5 Part 2 is the most underrated season. I think it's a really good season. It's a top-tier season for sure, and combining those two would make for an excellent Season 7 Part 2 that would definitely keep people watching, keep people hyped, and keep people guessing on what's going to happen every single week. So I think that the creatures that should be introduced, I have a few ideas. Um... I know a lot of people want to see vampires, and that's where I was going to go. Um, but I haven't really thought about how vampires would be introduced to the story this so this far in. That would make like narrative sense. You could kind of explain or come up with a story that's like vampires are kind of like a dying breed. 
they're an endangered species. Werewolves hunted them off centuries ago. They haven't really been around as much because there's so few of them. And then you could have a vampire antagonist, sort of like Jerry Dandridge from Fright Night, come in and be like, I want to bring back the vampire race to, I guess, its former glory and try to turn as many residents in Beacon Hills as, to vampires as possible. And I think that'd be a pretty cool story arc, kind of like in the vein of the Nogatsune, how the Nogatsune was just trying to cause as much chaos as possible. And uh, the Beast of Jabudan, how that was like the big bad everybody was trying to stop Theo um, and his pack. Well, Theo was really trying to gain its power, but he was also trying to stop it too. Uh, Deucalion was trying to stop it. Scott's pack was trying to. The Hunters were. So kind of like... Like I mentioned before, combined aspects of Season 3 Part 2 and Season 5 Part 2, I think that'd be great for Season 7 Part 2. And yeah, who would I name a vampire antagonist? Honestly, I don't know. Um, you can give him any wacky or retarded name that makes sense. Um, also, I think that ghouls should be introduced as well and golems because in Fright Night, the uh, assistant to Jerry Dandridge um, I think his name was Billy Cole. He was a golem, I'm pretty sure. And it would be really cool to bring that lore into Teen Wolf. Be like vampires always have sort of bodyguards to protect them. Um, they're golems. They listen to every single command. They don't really have a functioning brain. They're really just like the Hulk. They're mindless beast who obey their master's will and will do whatever they say or want. So I think that introducing that would be really cool for season seven. And it'd just be really cool to finally explore the dynamic of vampires and werewolves and teen wolf. And I think that um, it shouldn't be whack. Like the vampires, I don't want their designs to be tacky or ass. I kind of want them to be a mix of underworld and vampire diaries in a sense. Because I really love the vampire designs and vampire diaries. But Underworld has a more realistic approach, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, that'd be that'd be really cool to see as well. And last but not least, for season seven, one thing that I would love to see is just a or actually last two things. It's just a well, more well thought out, proper conclusion to Teen Wolf. If this is to be the final season. Now, if views are up, which I do think they will be because of the popularity Teen Wolf has gotten after the show ended, more people have been asking for another season. So all those people, which are millions and millions and millions of people who have been asking for another season, they're all going to tune in weekly to see another season of Teen Wolf. So I think the ratings will be more than season six, more than season five, more than season four. They'll probably be the highest ratings we've seen for the series since season three, part two. So, yeah. Um, now that that's done, we'll get to the second to last thing, um, which is Alpha Liam Dunbar. Liam Dunbar needs to become an Alpha this season because he has more than earned it at this point. And this will be the fourth season we've seen Liam in. Liam's been in season four, five, uh, six, and seven, or third, if you want to really Third or fourth, if you, you you can think of it, you can think of it either way because you think about it season four, five, six, seven, so that's really four, or you can think about it as five, six, and seven as three. You can really think of it either way, but um, yeah, Liam does not does need to become an alpha this season. How he's going to become an alpha, haven't really thought about that, but I'm sure the writers can come up with a way that logically makes sense for him becoming an alpha. Whether that's Scott willingly giving up his alpha spark because he doesn't want to be the true alpha anymore or Liam killing another alpha and then getting the spark we can find some way to make it work but that definitely needs to happen that's something a lot of people wanted to see happen in season six part two they really dropped the ball with that and I think that definitely needs to be the case of him becoming an alpha in season seven so yeah make that happen also last thing I just want to see a more proper conclusion season six part two the ending really felt like a season finale more than a series finale it didn't feel as conclusive as we wanted it to feel it felt very 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 rushed and jeff even came out and said that it was very rushed as well mtv just wanted team wolf off the air so they kind of forced him 
to make the the Wolves of War as fast as possible. He, he didn't really want it to be the ending that he envisioned. So, yeah, I think that a more well thought out, more proper conclusion, if the views, if the views aren't as high as I'm predicting they will be, um, I think that it should be more well thought out and it should serve the characters better, definitely. But if the views are high, like I'm predicting they will be, then, hey man, we're going to season eight. <laughs> But um, anyway, that's just my thoughts on what I think Season 7 should be personally. Um, it's a bit of a long one today. It's been about 15 minutes since I started recording, so we're probably going to end it here. Make sure you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace, love, and positivity as always. And I will catch you guys in the next one. See ya.